In this tutorial we're going to be looking at our final technique for normal map baking and that is using the uh, turtle renderer in um, Maya. So this is a kind of newly implemented renderer in Maya. I think it came in in Maya 2014. However it doesn't just allow you to render out images and scenes, you can also bake out different textures. Uh, so for instance you could also bake the diffuse um, from one model to another and you could bake ambient occlusion from a high poly onto a low poly as well. So it's kind of offering us a bunch of extra features. Now certainly the normal map bake is very quick and um, so it's certainly worth considering over the default one. Um, in fact I would say based on my limited use of it so far it certainly seems better. Uh, so let's try it out on our standard scene that we've been using. So the first thing we're going to want to do is make sure that Turtle is enabled since it's a plugin for Maya. So if we go to Window, Settings and Preferences, Plugin Manager, and in the first list here, if you scroll down, you should find Turtle somewhere in the list. There it is. Right, so you see how I already have mine ticked on, so just tick both of these on. Then if we come over to the Rendering tab, go to the Options, and um, we'll set this to turtle. Now you see I've got a little option up here. Um, also you should see a toolbar appear over here. So next what we want to do is go to the bake editor for turtle which is in Windows rendering editors turtle and then it's the bake layer editor that you want. So we don't specifically need to use this window, most of the options are also in our render settings tab which is this button here and turtle and then baking over here. So we've got bake to, um, what this does though is allow you to have different bake layers and the reason this is useful is you can have multiple models baking at once. So you can have target surfaces and source surfaces. So we could have four low polys in a row and four high polys with them and bake them all at once. So you can see that's a really kind of useful um, and fast method to work. Um, so you can make a new layer here, you can make a couple of those. So you see you've got different kind of bake layers here. So if you're baking some in one setting, you could then bake them in another setting as well. Um, so let's just, so maybe you would use this one for say 512 textures and we would use this one for 1024. I'll get that right eventually. So that might be one reason that you would use the layers. Um, but if you're just making one asset like this, there's not a specific kind of need for this. So this will allow us to um, actually go through the different layers that we've made and add models to them and so on. So let's stay in bake layer 1024 since we're going to have a 1024 map for this. Now you've got target and source surfaces. So first of all let's move this by holding down X onto our low poly. And you can see it won't actually let us add the source surface yet. So let's select the low poly and add that in. So you can see that in target surfaces I've got my low poly. Then we'll select the high poly and in source surfaces we'll add that in. So it's very similar to the standard any kind of baking app you use. You have a low poly and a high poly. And obviously you can add multiple in here as well by the way for, um, for baking. Uh, envelope surfaces. Now this is if you want to add a custom cage which obviously most of the time you will want to. Um, in this case we're going to try it without uh, just so that we can get through the tutorial a bit quicker but bear in mind this is where you would normally add your um, your cage. Okay so in transfer space we want to do wild space obviously we might need object space for DDO or whatever as well but in this case we just want to do wild space. Okay, this is all for different textures. 
Text the size you want to put that up to 1024. And we've got a directory for where we can save this file. So I'm just going to check mine in. Turtle in here. And we'll call this TA barrel turtle pen. Tag is good for the format because it's a uh, no it's not compressed. Okay, so edge dilation is obviously talking about the uh, what we spoke about before where you have this padding. And so you can put that really high as high as you want. Um, so in our outputs we want to go to shader outputs and we want to turn off all shading come down to normal map and tick on normal map and tangent space is fine ok so I think we've got most of our settings set up now um, so a couple of things we haven't done though we haven't edited our quality settings. So how do you edit the quality settings? Well if you come over to sampling you'll see you've got a minimum sampling rate and a maximum sampling rate. We also have a filter type here and width and a height for the ADC. Okay but let's just leave it like that for now. Now the one thing you want to do before you um, hit the render button <coughs> It's changed from rendering to baking. I'll just show you what happens if we render. So to bake, you actually just use this button here. Oh, sorry, that's the render view. Um, so you hit this button here, and you can see it will just render out an image. So you have to set this to baking. So then, if you hit the render button, it'll actually bake rather than render. And we can see that's not done a bad job. I mean, the main thing was though the incredible speed compared to uh, the mental ray equivalent. But we can also see there's some errors with this. So let's try putting up our sampling rate here and then hitting render again. So this little tab here. So you can see it's a bit slower, but already the quality has improved dramatically. Um, so let's kind of go in here, we can see it's a little bit jaggedy around here but some of the, in, in the main the quality is very good. So let's try increasing the sampling rate even more, so say 2 and 4, so we're going to crank it, that's very high and uh, I'm not sure how long this will take. Okay so we can see for the first time we're at, we can actually pay attention to this bar, but I'd say even even with the settings like this, the um, the speed is still better than the mental ray equivalent. Okay, so that's pretty good. Um, let's just try now turning that back down again to one and three, and this time we'll try. How high can we go with that? So let's just try putting our filter really high. Now, if you hit this little tab here, that will actually save out a version of this image. So now, when we hit render with our larger filter size, so let's just hit render, and we can see even with the sampling one and three, um, this is making, this is still reasonably, you know, actually having to preview it a little bit. But with our filter really high, you can see it's blurred the image a bit, well, quite a lot actually, because we set it so high. Um, but it has sorted out some of those jagged edges so while I would never use this normal map I just wanted to show you what this filter setting does so maybe we'll try something a bit lower like 3 and 3 and also one other thing we'll do is set this higher to maybe like 16 and then we'll hit render one more time um, you can save that one out, but I'm not that bothered about that actually. You, you get the point. Uh, 
Okay, so you can see what this option has done. It's given us that larger amount of padding. And notice how the padding cuts off if it hits any, um, any UVs or meets any other padding. So it's worth having that option quite high. Okay, so I think that's a pretty nice result. So that's saved out. So let's jump into Toolbag and preview that. So we'll go to Import Mesh. Uh, we'll bring in our low poly. And we'll add our new normal map to that. So modular images, I think. Uh, turtle. It's claiming that's not supported for some reason. So let's just try opening that texture up in Photoshop to see, see if we can figure out why that isn't supported. That's weird. It's almost like it hasn't hasn't given it any uh, format. Let's just try doing TGA. Yeah, there we go. So um, one thing to bear in mind um, is make sure you put dot TGA on the end there. That'll be why it hasn't saved it out. So we'll go back into Marmoset and load that in. And we can see that's a, a nice result that we've achieved there. Um, what you could try doing is also is then loading in your uh, your others just to compare them. So um, so there's our X normal result. You can see there's barely any uh, any difference with that. So yeah, there's barely any difference. I mean, this one's a bit softer, but as we saw before, all we need to do for that is just put our sampling down a bit and then rebake. Uh, one more thing with the image, uh, you don't the rename thing I just did then, you can also come up here and go to file save image and you can save it out there. Uh, so we can see without me um, importing a different cage this seems to have baked pretty nicely. Uh, just to show you one other thing you can do if you don't have a cage um, let's say if I select my high poly here what if you make your low poly um, this is the kind of thing you wouldn't do at this stage to be honest this is the kind of thing you would do while you're modeling the actual while you're making the model um, if your high po uh, low poly completely encompasses the high poly then what you can do is set your baking to inwards and that will um, that will just bake from whatever's inside the high poly so you can see our whole uh, uh, whatever's inside the low poly so you can see our whole high poly is inside this now so that is one way to do it but I would still much rather make my own custom cage um, or just try the bake out first and see if it works. If it works okay then you don't need to make the cage obviously and so that can be a lot faster. Um, and obviously you can see the model was already triangulated and our smoothing groups were already already set up. So yeah that's the new turtle renderer in Maya and how we can use it to bake normal maps.